Well, I figured I'd make a follow-up video on using a Lenovo M6 Tiny as a TrueNest storage array. Or, well, storage box. <laughs> um, I ended up figuring out some of my issues. The laptop I was previously using had not so great of a solid-state drive. And some of my speed drops were due to the cache on the SSD getting overwhelmed, more than likely. Although, on the flip side, with the particular drive I used in, in this, just for the test, it also has cache limitations that are limiting on how much it can write. But on, on the read side of things, so currently these files are on the array. I'm just going to dump them onto this laptop. Also, make the screen a little brighter. So now it can saturate the gigabit link without any problems when doing a read. And lighting's not conducive to reading that, but I'll just zoom in, I guess. There we go. So I'm using around 12 watts of power. If memory serves correct, I'll check under the cover here. Yeah, I've put everything back to the way it was intended to be by factory. So I don't think the thermal issues were the actual issue that I was running into. I did put the cooling performance mode onto the performance option rather than acoustic. So that helps. Out of curiosity, I did put the fan at full speed in the BIOS settings, but that was, oh man, that was awful. This thing, this this tiny was shaking and vibrating and it just sounded like a, a fan that was just going to go out of control. It was spinning so fast. But yeah, as you can see, now the reads are pretty stable since I'm using a nicer laptop with a NVMe drive. And once that finishes, I will copy those files over to the NAS. And you will see that there will be some dips. And after consulting some people in the Serve the Home forums, it was pointed out that more than likely I'm running into caching issues with this drive. And that's why it's dipping when I'm writing to it. But the read issues were purely just the laptop's issue where the cheap no-name brand SSD that was in there was getting overloaded. And system utilization is not as bad either. I did make one change where I found a M.2 SSD from a thin client and I put that in here for the TrueNAS boot drive. Also, it seems like writing is a little bit more intensive on this box than reading is. I don't know. I guess it's probably normal. I don't really pay attention to the stats on my true NAS box because it just, it just, uh, I don't care about power utilization and it just does what I need it to do. Would be nice to get faster than gigabit transfer speeds, but I kind of failed in my attempt to figure out how to get the 10 gigabit network working on my servers and I don't know if the lines I ran to my office would support 10 gig even. This is actually doing pretty good today. Further in, it should start dipping a little. If not, then uh, I don't know. I guess I'm just making a fool of myself in this video. Hmm. And temperatures are getting a little high. It's uh, around 54 Celsius was the peak, 55. These just don't have a good cooling system on them. But for the low TDP, yeah, even it's getting up to 14 watts. Hmm. I don't know what changed, but uh, it's actually uh, sustaining a consistent gigabit. Now for writing, but 
Yeah, it's an interesting use case for this tiny. I can't say if it's practical or not because for the same amount of money, you can get like a cheap knit gear NAS and put four spinners in it and build something that's higher capacity with the same cost, basically around the $500 price point. And with my friend that has a Netgear NAS that I consulted, he says his NAS is pulling 40 watts consistently. And despite being a Netgear NAS, it can do the majority of the things that true NAS can do, which I was surprised. I figured that these NASs that were factory built were limited on what you can do in comparison. So it's not necessarily the most practical way to go. But I think if you're going for really low power utilization, this might be the way to go. But yeah, basically everything in here is still, I put it back to being stock. Um, you'll have to excuse the flash drive. I was too lazy to properly mount the M.2 drive, so I, I wedged a flash drive under the solid state drive to keep the M.2 drive in position. But yeah, I upgraded this to 8 gig from the 4 gig, and then I added that M.2 drive. And that that definitely seems to help too. But in the initial video, my laptop was the bottleneck, which I was a little surprised. So, yeah. Still, still debatable if it's worth doing. I think, I think it'd be more if you want a system that you can manage yourself and you want it to be really low power utilization because this idles around 8 watts and then peak peak power usage is 14 so yeah pretty efficient and then especially if you're gonna have it on the go I think it might be interesting to put one of these in my van and use it as a zone minder um, security camera or something but as of now, it's more of just me kind of tinkering. I think I'm going to play with a few of the other machines I have and see if there's other boxes that make amusing um, choices for true NAS storage arrays. <laughs> but thanks for watching.